Hey there, what's going on? Dr. Dave here. I'm actually live in my rig today. Pleasureway Excel TS. It's a 2007. And I've just uh, got some things to do. I'm not really on a trip. I've just got some things to do with it around town. Which got me thinking, actually. Um, a very common question that I'm asked these days is, Hey, if I get a Class B RV, I can just use it as a car, as a second car. I don't really need a car because I can use this. It's so small. I can take it around town. I can do whatever I want, go shopping. And people ask me if that's a good idea. And I'm about to answer that question right now because there's no cut and dry. There, I think there are some benefits, some good things about it, and also there are some downsides, some negatives. And as, as I think of things, as I'm driving here, I'm going to talk to you about them. And I'm keeping my eye on the road, guys, so I'm not looking right at the camera. Sorry! But um, one of the first things that comes to my mind, um, a downside as far as um, using your Class B rig as uh, everyday for everyday driving is you've got to tell your insurance company because oftentimes when we get insurance for motorhomes for RVs and motorhomes etc they are um, counting on you driving a certain number of days per year not all the time so you just have to check with your insurance company and make sure they understand that you're going to be using your rig as primary transportation also all year round so they can adjust your insurance accordingly if you don't have that done yet. Um, but one thing to remember also, I'm not a big fan of using or a Class B rig as everyday transportation, commuting, because just think about it for a second. This is a small home. It's got plumbing. It's got electrical, it's got all kinds. It's like you're driving around in a home every single day and the roads are tough. It's not like you're out on the highway going, you know, stretch of miles on the highway and then you're stopping to camp. You're like taking this on bumps, curves, shopping centers, all kinds of crazy things where it's gonna be a lot of wear and tear on your van, on your motorhome, on your rig. And I'm not so sure I would wanna do that to mine. Um, too many things I think can go wrong. They, they go wrong already, even if you're just on the highway. And taking it around town with all the bumps, the potholes, the everyday commuting and driving, I don't think it's a good idea. I'm not doing it. I would not do it. There are some advantages, though. Let's face it. You pull up somewhere, you pull into a shopping center, and you got to go to the bathroom really badly. You just go into the back of the rig, and you go to the bathroom. Or you can cook yourself a meal while your wife is in, in shopping or something like that. Um, if you're really tired, you could um, lay down in the back in the bed. You could put the TV on. It turns into kind of like a man cave or a woman cave. There are some advantages. I mean, you basically, wherever you are, you've got everything you need. But how often do you really need to pull into a shopping center and take a nap or watch TV or cook a meal. I mean, it really, in, in, in all my years of living and driving, it really has not happened to me that often that I feel like, I'm, I've got to cook a meal right now. It just doesn't really happen that often. And let's face it, it's just more difficult to maneuver than a car. You're going to be faced with situations in parking lots and gas stations and intersections and just all kinds of things. It's just not going to be as easy as driving a car and it's going to be more stressful. I don't care what you say it's going to be as a, as a commuter car, as a commuter vehicle, it's just going to be more stressful. Okay. So I'm back with you. I just uh, took a little break for a second. I was washing, I pulled into a car wash, one of those self-serve car washes and washed my pleasure weight. looks pretty good. Doesn't it? Not too bad. Pretty clean here. So, um, and while I was washing my van, I was thinking even more. I'm thinking, this is just not the kind of thing I want to use as everyday transportation. There's just too many things here. I mean, number one, well, not number one, there's a lot of, I've already given you a bunch of examples, but the tire pressure on an RV is much more crucial, much more critical that you have the tire pressure right all the time because of the, the, the heavy weight you've got going here. On a car, don't get me wrong, it's important to have the right pressure, but it's not as crucial if you've got a blowout on one of these things, baby, it's just look out. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be good. So, and you've got all kinds of things hanging in awnings and um, storage compartments. There's just so many things that can just get totally messed up if you're 
using this as everyday transportation. So I think that kind of just clinched it as I'm washing it and looking around at all the intricate details and everything I've got going on here. I just don't want to be using this as everyday transportation. I just don't. Now, again, some of you might, there might be some reason that you say, I, but I want to do it. And that's okay if you want to, but I'm giving you the pluses and minuses. And I just think in my opinion, the minuses far outweigh the pluses when it comes to using your class B for everyday transportation. After a lot of thinking and driving around and talking to you about this, my feeling is no, I do not think it is a good idea to use your class B RV as an everyday commuting vehicle. I, I just, again, I, I've told you many reasons. I just don't think it's a good idea. Now, you might have reasons that you want to do it and that's cool. Somebody asked me my opinion on whether I think it's a good idea. I'm going to give it the thumbs down. That's what I have to say. So thanks so much for being with me today. I really appreciate it. I am Dr. Dave, the RV dummy. I appreciate you and I know for sure I will see you next time. Take care.